Today is November 18th, 2020. We are scheduled to have our first really hard deep freeze tonight. And everything I planted out here is the best tubers I saved from last year's seed grow outs or tubers that were given to me from other people's seed grow outs. Originally, there were two rows of tetraploid potatoes and one row of diploids. In April of this year, we had two hard freezes and they completely destroyed the diploids and they didn't come back. The tetraploids froze to some extent, but they came back fine. So I don't really have a great explanation as for the reason why that happened. However, even though I made an attempt to dig up all the potatoes last year, there were a few potatoes in this area last year, just in a few select spots in the front row. So some of the row that was supposed to be diploid potatoes, it ended up being tetraploid potatoes anyway. So, well, we'll see what we get. So uh, it's really difficult for me to do this and film at the same time. So I'll talk a little bit about the variety and then we'll go through and dig them up. Just some general information to get going here. So the area here last year, it was really heavily cover cropped and manured. Uh, that was all tilled in this spring, probably late March or early April. And then I made trenches. I planted the potatoes, filled the trenches in. Once the potatoes were up and I had hilled them about three times, I came back through and mulched everything with straight manure from the barn. Let's see if we can see some of that. Here, you can see that. That looks like, flip it over there. Okay. This stuff works great. You know, it really suppresses weeds. It really holds in moisture and I have an infinite amount of it, essentially. The few areas where I didn't get a good coverage of that, I use grass clippings. And as you can see from the, the drip tape, I did have drip tape set up out here, going down the two primary walkways so I could get some water out here. It was a really hot, dry summer. All the varieties in this area were indeterminate in growth habit, which means that they just grow until they are frozen. I did grow some Katahdin in a different separate row. That's a determinate variety, commercial variety. So I'd have something earlier and that shut down months ago and I've dug those up quite some time ago and been eating through those. I have done a little bit of digging out here just to kind of see what I have, but not to any great extent. So it's gonna be exciting for me as well to see what we end up with. When this was in its prime, the area here was just completely covered in vines and there wasn't much of any weed issue. It was nearly complete coverage. So it's worked out pretty good. And over here, this is my living willow fence. Uh, that contains things I don't want deer to eat like blueberries and maize, etc. All right, let's get digging. Oh, I should add, these were planted out, I think something like late March or early April, which is pretty typical for me for potatoes. It's a big risk that they're going to freeze, but probably three or four years out of five, they don't freeze. And the sooner you can get those things going in this climate where we get hot, dry summers, the better. Uh, the other thing is, so last year when I did my big seed grow out, I didn't do any sprays intentionally because I wanted to see how the things performed. Also no irrigation to speak of. Now this year with all the excitement, so to speak, with 2020. The age of man is over. The time of the orc has come. I felt that it was best to maximize the productivity. So the potatoes were irrigated, as I've stated earlier, and I did spray them at least once a month, if not every two weeks with Spinosad or horticultural oil. And now that doesn't produce a perfectly pristine crop, but it was enough so that potato bugs never 
completely defoliated things. I mean, there were some outbreaks here and there where they started to get a little gnarly, but I managed to get these things through all the way to frost. So really curious to see what kind of yield we get because the vines were able to grow up until frost, which was about two weeks ago. So, okay, first variety here. Sarpomira, bulk F2, high yield, great texture. Um, so, these, I'm positive I got Oxbow Farm as a tuber uh, last year. So, I was really impressed with this one. I wrote the high yield, great texture. I was really pleased with this variety. Uh, my sense of it last year, and I only planted like three to five plants out, was that this could be like a primary main crop homestead type variety. So let's dig these up and see what we get. Um, if it feels like I'm rushing more than usual, it is freezing out here. It's uh, probably about 38 or 39 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have a good 15 mile an hour wind. So it's going to be miserable, so I'm going to try to bang this out. All right, let's get going. I am going to try to show you uh, me pulling at least one of these plants of the Sarpomira Bulk F2 out. And I just also wanted to show a little bit of what the, the soil here looks like. You can see it's pretty good these days. Okay, so let's try to pull this out and let's see what we got. This has been fairly typical for this one so far. See, the roots are reasonably concentrated underneath the plant, and they're generally small to medium. There's been a few large ones, but most of them are in the small to medium size range. So just to give you an idea what, what they look like coming out of the ground and what the ground looks like. All right, so I've dug up the Sarpomira Bulk F2, and it's basically a full bulb crate, which typically amounts to 40 or 50 pounds. These are a little bit annoying to dig because of the large number of smallish tubers, but the yield is incredible. The row I dug from, it's about 10 feet, 10, 12 feet tops, and this is what I got. So that's a pretty extraordinary yield. Uh, let's just give you a little better idea what these actually look like. There's a little bit of a, a bicolor tendency to these. Some of them that I stab with the pitchfork. It's a little bit of coloration under the skin. The bulk of them are sort of this flattened, almost coin shape sort of a thing. Um, you can see here's another one. Very, very flat, right? But on the whole, these are uh, nice looking potatoes. And I remember from eating these last year, just they cook really quick, have a thin, delicate skin and excellent flavor and textures, really good potatoes. So that's it for that one. And let's we'll move on to the next one. Okay, as you can see from the label, Katahdin highest yield. This is a seedling of the potato variety Katahdin. It's made the highest yield of my uh, Katahdin seedlings last year. I remember this one being a pretty incredible yielder. This is what we got out of at least 20 feet of row. This is absolutely terrible. Incredibly disappointing but it's a good illustration of how much things can change between the seedling year and the tuber year. So this one, contrary to expectations, instead of yielding better, yielded dramatically worse. And it was basically garbage. And I won't go forward with this variety anymore. We'll just eat all of these and call it good. This is outrageous. Awful. So. I have at least one more Katagan clone though that I think might be more promising. So we'll keep digging and see how it goes. Next variety, we're on to another Sarpomira seedling. 
This is Sarpamira 10 pounds, Oxbow Farm, best overall. The 10 pounds, if I remember right, that's what Oxbow got as a yield in the seedling year from this clone. I remember last year that I thought this was the best of the potatoes I grew last year overall. And really handsome potato, good yield, good size, good keeping qualities, tasty, good texture. There's really nothing bad to say about this at all. So uh, let's get digging these and see what we get. Although I, I do expect these to be pretty good. Mostly because someone else has already gone to the trouble of seeing what they do, you know, year to year. So pretty high hopes for these. So let's see if we can dig these up. So this is the yield for the Sarpomira 10 pounds. This is hugely disappointing as well. As you can see, these are mostly nice sized potatoes. They're really nice looking potatoes. They have a lovely bicolored modeled appearance. This is a really super nice potato. However, it's incredibly attractive to rodents. And this is the first spot that I dug up where when I went to dig these things, there were whole clumps that all it was was hollow potatoes that were just a skin and a burrow dug in and all the potato eaten out. And a huge portion of these were eaten by rodents. Just as a raw estimate, I think that if we hadn't had the massive rodent damage, I would think that this crate would have been mostly full. I think the potential genetically is there for this to be a fantastic variety. And I think in many cases, the varieties that rodents prefer are probably either the most nutritious, the best tasting, or both. So this is really sad, but I would probably give this one another shot for another year in a different spot. Maybe we'll see a little difference. Hard to say. It wasn't this way last year, so... Who knows, last year they were in a different spot, so give it another shot. So yeah, this is a Sarpo Mira 10 pounds, Oxbow Farm, best overall. The favorite of the rodents and mostly was eaten. So this is Shetland Black number five, best yield, low dormancy. I think this might've been different than the one I talked about earlier, Shetland Black number four. In any case, see it's a purple skin, yellowish white interior. Sorry for the dirt. I stabbed that one with a pitchfork, but you can see what the interior color looks like. You can see this is a really nice looking potato. The yield is not great, and the size is not great. It's certainly better than what it was last year, but... I think there was at least you know, a 10, 15 foot row here. And you can see what we got, which is pretty poor. So I don't know. I'll have to eat some of these. I didn't eat any of these last year. There wasn't enough to eat. If they have an incredibly great flavor or texture, they might be worth, you know, at least going forward with some seedlings. So we'll see. Keep on digging. So this one is Katahdin Largest Tuber. It was the largest single tuber I dug up last year. So out of a maybe a 10 or 12 foot row section, this is what we got. Now, yeah, that is a big potato. Absolutely monstrous. Yeah quickly running out of daylight here and it looks like I'm not quite going to get everything dug but I maybe I'll get three quarters of it dug so this variety is TLSF pink 2017 I did a video last year about TPS potato reveal please go watch that video I do a really lengthy explanation of the story behind this variety but the short version is I got it from Oxbow Farm as a tuber last year it's a really good variety oh there's my photobombing cat I haven't seen her in the videos for a while but here she is she's been killing rats and mice and voles as i dig the potatoes so she's being a
good girl. So, this is a good one. Um, see, it's a small red potato, medium skin, good texture, cooks really quick, has a good flavor, sets an enormous amount of seeds every year, although most of the potatoes this year in general just didn't set very well. It was too hot and too dry. And they got frosted a few times. The whole situation wasn't ideal. So, but yeah, it's a good variety. And it yielded pretty well. And there was minimal rodent damage on this one. The other thing I wanted to mention is that, so last year when I did my trial of these varieties, um, I planted like generally three to five roots in a small area near where I grew the potatoes this year. And I was sure I had them all dug out, but apparently I did not. And they came back strong. So a significant portion of this is just what came back from the previous year. So when I say about digging potatoes before frost, what I really mean is tubers that are set close to the surface, some of those will freeze and be ruined, especially any that are touching the surface or exposed. But anything that's buried deep down generally comes through all but the worst winters around here. So we could really almost treat potatoes like a perennial, although I can't recommend that for all the complicated disease issues. So don't do that, please. But the point is, though, that they do overwinter pretty readily here. And it's going to be, I think, a big problem trying to get the potatoes out of this row. Um, I'm going to have to put something else in here next year and think real hard about what that something else is to try to crop them all out completely and not put potatoes in here again for three to five years to really get rid of them but yeah this one yielded pretty well so and there's the old kitty all right so the other day when i was digging potatoes i ran out of daylight so and then i had to wait a couple days for it to warm up again so now we have a warm day the ground's thawed out so I will come out and I'm going to dig the rest of the potatoes. The only variety left is Yog Shagoth, which is notorious. It's incredibly vigorous. It's the most vigorous potato variety I've ever grown and ever seen. Last year when I grew it, it was a little bit of a nuisance to dig because it puts tubers everywhere. And it's hard to find them all. And it's a really good tasting potato. It has a lot of great attributes to it. On the whole, the tubers are on the small side last year. So let's dig it up and see what kind of a yield we get and then see what the tubers are like and the whole situation. So let's get digging, guys. I finished digging up the Yog Shagoth and this is an extremely aptly named variety. It's uh, basically a reference to the HP Lovecraft mythos and as you can see here it's a tolican seedling tolican is an extremely late blight resistant variety from mexico so this thing is just a monstrosity as you can see it's a real attractive tuber the vast majority of these are on the small to medium size there's a few large ones there's not very many large ones but they are uh, tinted light lavender purple and most of them have some degree of lavender purple tinge to the inside of the flesh usually there's a ring around the inside of the tuber but sometimes it goes a little more than that also you can see here i managed to find one fruit that is definitely a yog shagoth fruit which is great because this is definitely a variety i'd like to get seed from because this variety has a lot of tremendous attributes. It's the most vigorous variety I've ever grown by far. It's very resistant to disease and pests. And it is extremely productive. It keeps extremely well, extremely high dormancy, and it cooks really quickly and has a great texture and flavor. And also, it didn't have a lot of rodent damage. There was some rodent damage, but it was on the very low end. So. It's really a good one. It's heat and drought tolerant as you know, compared to most potatoes. Really, really good variety. Things I don't like about it is that, generally speaking, the tuber size is quite small and 
it produces the tubers in an extremely unconcentrated way. They're spread over a huge area. They're really hard to dig up. And it seems to actually send stolons out really far in all directions and even deep underground. So normally in a potato, you know, most of them are, especially the commercial kinds, the tuber set is concentrated up near the surface right at the base of the plant. These guys, one plant is gonna have tubers over probably like a two and a half or three foot circle. And some of those things are as deep as a foot or 18 inches down in the ground. It's really tough to dig them up and it's almost impossible to get them all. So I had a huge number of these return last year from pieces I couldn't dig up. I did notice that where I planted them intentionally this year, the set was a little more concentrated and on the whole, the tuber size was bigger. So that's definitely good to know. But yeah, these are, these are monstrosity. It is a, is a nice variety, I like it. But good gravy, it's hard to dig these things up. But uh, there's probably 20 foot of total row space, maybe 25 feet. And this is a heaping crate and I picked it up already once and there's probably 50 or 60 pounds here, probably go more like 60 pounds. So that's quite a good yield. Um, the only thing that ended up being better than this in terms of yield for space, unit space, was the first of the Sarpomira derivative varieties I dug up. But this is certainly a good variety. And I think that if you were looking for sort of an ultimate survivalist homesteader type potato, I don't know if you could do much better than this guy. This is a machine, so it really has a lot of great attributes. Like I said, just that generally speaking, it's got small roots and it's a pain to dig up. But got the potatoes dug for the year now, so that's certainly a good thing. So see how it goes for another year. I didn't get a lot of fruit harvested this year. I'd like to keep going with the varieties I have until I can get a real good fruit harvest and then do another big seedling grow out. But I'm probably looking at another at least three to five more years before we go that route. So in any case, that's the potato harvest for 2020. I think we did pretty well. Hopefully we don't run out. We've never had a year before this year where we didn't run out of potatoes, but I think we're gonna end up with something like five or six full bulb crates. And the most we've ever had before is more like three and we might be able to keep potatoes, you know, this way. So normally we run out January, late January to early February, we're out of potatoes. So let's see if we can stretch these guys a little further than that. Okay, thank you for watching.